Hey guys, Nate the intern here. Um, today I am brought in my friend Ian and he's going to show us how to use the wire frame tool as well as all of the other frame generator tools later in some later videos. Um, Ian, so what's the use of wireframe? So wireframe is really just a stepping stone into frame generator, but it also can be used for any skeletal based model that you want to make. So in the end, it's really useful. All right, so uh, let's see what you got. Okay, so this is ultimately the frame we're going to be making. Uh, as you can see, it has a lot of different members, some angled features, and then some uprights. So we, as you, we probably have a good bit of work ahead of us. So uh, I'm going to go create a new part file and just finish the sketch and delete it so I can get the sketch on the plane that I want which in this case is the XZ plane. And then from there, I'll just start ske sketching the chassis. All right, so you're making sure that it's really relative to the origin, making sure that everything is kind of constrained around that point? Exactly, and that's why I'm not just starting from the origin. I'm going around, and then eventually I'll go back and add relations to it so that it's fully defined. So now I'm just adding some dimensions, just getting out the basic numbers so I can and then later I'll add it add relations so that I don't have to change it if I want to adjust. Very nice. So you're gonna create some dimensions and then maybe add like add some constraints. So here you're going and grabbing an equal constraint. I like that. Yeah exactly. And then from there we can add in some more lines to create the inner geometry of the chassis. All right, so right now you're sketching like the base plane, so kind of the, you know, the side rails for the wheels and whatnot. Yeah, and then some ladder rails to maintain rigidity so it doesn't just bend inwards. Awesome. So already thinking ahead about, you know, how strong this is going to need to be. And... Yeah. All right. Adding some more dimensions, making sure I have enough room for the wheels. And then what I do here is actually use parameters. As you can see, um, this one is this dimension is called D4, so I call the name of the previous one D3, and it just automatically makes them equal. Oh, very nice. So you're using the actual auto, the automatic referencing that Inventor does to your advantage. Exactly. That's a good trick. And then now I'll add a relation to the origin. I like how you use the auto select of the center center of the line. That's yeah. really easy. And as you and as you can see, it's symmetric across um, one of the origin planes. So that makes it makes it really easy to communicate to future people who might be looking at this design. Yeah, I also really like how uh, you modeled it so that the view cube and the x, y, and z axes are all correct so it doesn't get imported into a model upside down or anything. That's really annoying when you have to import a model that's upside down. Yeah, so now I'm actually creating a new work plane by making it normal or perpendicular to a line that's already in the uh, in the part and then I select a point to make it coincident to and that way I can create the mast for the arm that will eventually be attached to the robot. Very nice. So use an equal constraint. Yeah. I like that. Equal constraints are really useful, um, especially when you apply them at this low of a level. I, I really, I really like that it's speeding up your workflow. Yeah, and then this line I actually make a construction line to indicate that it isn't going to be used as a member in the final assembly, in the final frame generated assembly. So it's just another way to communicate your intent to people who might be looking at this part in the future. Yeah, I think that's something that a lot of first students could gain from knowledge from is the idea of you're not only modeling for you, but you're modeling for the rest of your team. So keeping that in mind. Exactly. What are you doing now? So just making sure that they're the two mast members are the correct distance from the center of the robot, making sure that they're both the same distance away and so that you have enough room for the arm itself to 
to be attached at the top. So now we might want to get rid of that or that extra work plane so I can just go into the feature tree and turn off visibility. That way it doesn't clutter up my design later on. It's also really nice if you do that at the part level because then when you import it into the assembly you don't have to turn off work planes. Exactly. So now I'm actually going to create a 3D sketch and what this is going to allow me to do is create those angled pieces that you saw in the final design because otherwise you're just constrained to 2D planes so a 3D sketch makes doing angled pieces like that really easy. And what's really nice about the 3D line feature is that I, ha I don't have to actually um, dimension out anything in this case. I can just have it snap two points that I've already created. As you can see, I just had it snap to the point on the base plane and then another point on the mast and then doing the same thing again. So there's really not much complexity that you'd normally wow. expect from 3D sketches. That was really fast. Yeah. Um, much faster than trying to do a complicated loft or some other way of doing that. Exactly. I really like it. So now I'm going to actually extrude the outer areas so that we have um, some structure for our ramp mount. That way we can actually lift two robots in the end game or provide some space for them to climb up, if you will. And also what I'm doing is I'm re-revealing the sketch the, that Extrude was based off of because I still want to use those members in the actual frame generated frame. Awesome. This so. is very nice and uh, wow, so that's your layout basically, huh? Pretty much, yeah. All right, well, there you have it. That's one fast and easy way to create a, a three-dimensional wireframe that then I'm sure Ian's going to show us in the next video how to leverage into a f actual robot frame. Um, so, Ian, thank you for your time. Of uh, I think it's been really helpful. And hopefully you guys can take this wireframe tool and leverage it not only to make wireframes for your, for your actual robot frames, but to use as three-dimensional representations for parts of your robot that you haven't quite locked down yet. Until next time, I'm Nate the Intern, this is Ian. Good luck out there.